Hello, and welcome to Instant GMP's training on NPR workflows. This will be an in-depth look at the creation of an NPR and the prerequisites to its creation. In this video, we will be focusing on prerequisites which include adding materials both used in manufacturing and manufactured, establishing specifications for those materials, and organizing products into projects. This is video one of three. Let's begin with creating materials. To create a material, click on the Add New Record button. From there, you will be presented with a drop-down box to decide if the material you will be entering will be used in manufacturing or manufactured. If you want the explanation of the difference in the meaning of these terms, please reference the orientation video number two. We'll start by adding a final good. The first box you are presented with is the material name definition. The box lined in blue is unique for OWIPs and final goods. Now if your product has a strength denomination for pharmaceuticals or ingestibles that are required to list this property, you would list it here. Suffix is a supplemental modifier that allows for uniqueness. These three boxes, along with the type and batch unit, help create unique modifiers so the system can create different part numbers for similar products. The system will present an error if there is a duplication of products. Type allows you to choose the type of material this product is. Is it a bulk OWIP, bulk final good? package dough whip, package final good, etc. Next is what unit do you measure this good in when you receive or ship it such as per gram, per kilogram, per each, container, fluid ounces, etc. Material ID is a way to transfer your legacy material numbering system into the software. Material description allows for a more detailed product or material description. Cost per unit allows you to place a numerical value for how much it costs to purchase or sell a piece of inventory per batch unit. Default alert level quantity is utilized in our automatic report system which will send selected users an email notifying them inventory has hit the alert limit and should be monitored for repurchasing soon. Default reorder level is identical to alert level, but this is a warning to say material should be ordered. Default order lead time in days is utilized in the material resource planning aspect of the software. Account for material is utilized in the QuickBooks functionality. Storage condition allows you to choose which storage condition this material will need upon receiving or creation. Recommended shelf life allows you to specify the shelf life of a material. QM retest period in months allows you to place a retest period in which the material should be put into quarantine, retested, and released again. Expiry period in months allows you to place an expiry period in which the material will be listed as expired and should no longer be used. After you complete this material page, you can confirm it and the material will be added to the list. Now a detail to keep in mind is deletion of materials, which also applies to specifications. You can delete both up to a certain point within the software. After a material has been requisitioned along with the corresponding specification, neither of these can be deleted. The system begins tracking and logging all audible details at this point and therefore after requisition materials and specifications cannot be deleted, so be mindful and accurate when putting this information in. From here you can move on to specifications. There are two ways to add specifications. You can choose add new record which will pull up a list of all materials without a specification which you could click on the green arrow or you can scroll through the visible list and click the pencil to update the specification. Once inside the specification, you are presented with a new entry screen. Some information is auto-filled, such as the material name, part number, and specification version. The first box presented is the effective date. This should be saved for the QA signature you see at the bottom. This is because upon completion of signatures, the effective date is set, but is still able to be edit until both signatures are entered. Following this is the QM retest and expiry period. Now this will be auto-filled if you enter this information into the material information. If not, you can enter it differently for different specifications for the same material. Following this, you can enter the safety and handling instructions, which normally consist of proper PPE, how to clean up spills, etc. The character limit is high, which allows for detailed instructions to be entered. General sampling is where you will enter the total amount to be sampled for any type of QC testing. If you wish to highlight how to prepare these samples, you have a high character limit to do so. The next section is attachment. Here you can add any document you wish to attach to the specification from your own computer.
Below this is something similar with controlled document. This differs in one way because you can enter a URL from a website or choose a document that is already loaded into the software's document management system or DMS. Add test is the main component of specification. Here you can add a multitude of tests. You can add as many tests as necessary for regulation requirements or your own system of quality. Upon adding a test, you are presented with four boxes. Tests are where you would define testing to be done on material. Methods, on the other hand, are the means in which you will test a specific variable within the test. Acceptance limit is where you can enter the acceptance criteria for a passing result. Sampling is the section where you will enter the amount you will sample from the general sampling plan. The final box is simply a checkbox in which you can select if this test will be used for release of the product. After all this information is entered, the final steps are to sign off on the specification, which requires a project manager or project supervisor along with a QA signature. Now that we have created materials and specifications, we need to organize them into a project. A project is a high-level way of organizing final goods or OWIPs, materials, clients, and personnel. Final goods and OWIPs are a necessary entry to make in a project because when creating an MPR, the first distinction the author must make is selecting a project. It is from the Project Final Good OWIP tab that you select the product this MPR will create. The Materials tab is where you can enter materials used to make these products. This is not the Bill of Materials. The functionality of placing materials here is to allow for project allocation of inventory within the Inventory Management screen. The Clients tab allows you to choose clients to which you are allocating this MPR. Typically this is saved for pharmaceutical companies who have agreed to make one product a specific way for a client. If you are just a wholesale manufacturer, who repeats the same process regardless of client, we recommend making yourself the client. The Personnel tab is where you can list people you wish to associate with this project. By default, all project managers and quality managers are placed into any new project you create, but they are not retroactively added. Additional removal of people in this tab can limit employees' access or even visibility of certain MPRs or BPRs, but this will come into play when we get to the training aspect of the software. The only other functionality in the Personnel tab is MPR Prover and BPR Reviewer. By clicking on the pencil icon, you can select who will have this responsibility. A note about this selection, whomever, whether it be one person or six people, you list with those responsibilities will be all responsible for signing these documents for completion. If you want three MPR Provers and two BPR Reviewers, then only select that many of each. There is no alternate or delegate choice here. With the completion of the project section of the software, we will end the video here. Next time we will go over the intricacies of creating an MPR within the Instant GMP software.